All right, welcome back to another episode of Game Crafters, where today we're going to try to get this finished. There's a few other things that I want to try to get done with before we fully get to finishing this thing. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like and subscribe for more. So we're going to try to be quick here. I did 12 fucking hours, ate a bad muffin apparently. I don't feel sick yet, but I'm probably going to have to take a massive dimmer dump as soon as we're done recording this and hopefully played up. <clears throat> but I need to do some things to get us to where we need to get to. So first things first, I need to remind myself, where is the thingy? The thing that allows me to enter the world map, uh, or main menu first. <clears throat> right here. I need this... Enter main menu or world map. <clears throat> Key code X. Uh, entering level false. Entering menu false. Make it true. Fading transition true. And then that there is instead. Whoops. World map transfer. Which is pretty simplistic, really. Um, we got our main menu transfer to now. Move over into world map transfer. And I think we just need world map, right? And that should take care of at least that department. I'm going to have to double check real quick. <clears throat> Nothing else there except pressing X. Right? Yeah. Because yeah, that is the world map. So I'm going to go on ahead and do this real quick. I'm going to press X as soon as this thing is done doing its thing. There we go. Okay. So that takes care of at least the transfer process. There's a few things that we have to do here, obviously. What are you doing, cat? <clears throat> um, Alright, let's see here. So first things first, we need to figure out where the hell the main camera is. I need the fade transition, so let me go on ahead and put that in just so we can get that ready and ready to go. So I need to go over to my prefabs. Mm, is it pause menu? No. Where would that be? Menu? Ah, here we are. Put that in the UI. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, rotate it not that direction. Not that direct direction either. 90? Zero? Will that work? Let's look at my game here. Okay, no. Well, yes and no. I need this to go... Where exactly? Z? Is that what I needed to do? I don't know, actually. Where is the main camera looking at right now? What direction is this? Okay, so negative 100. No, not that. This. Oh, well, actually, yeah. Okay, so negative 100. And now, good, great. <clears throat> so we got our little fade transition here. Ready and raring to go. <clears throat> I would say the only other thing that I would need to do is implement the main menu music. Uh, I think I could just go on ahead and uh, create an audio source main menu music. Do I need the sound manager here? Yeah, I kind of do, don't I? Well, let me at least get that in and BGM play on awake. So that way it doesn't need to do anything else here. It's just play. <clears throat> now I need to go into my prefabs and grab the sound manager. Where is the sound manager again? Ah, here we are. I think I'll just put this up here. I think it's only just used primarily for this, right? I don't think I have this set up for anything other than just getting the sound to be what it needs to be. It's been a while, and memory cannot work properly. So, uh, yeah. 
Anyways, if we were to, well, no, if we were to go back to here, I can get some stuff set up as soon as I go back to here, do the test again, and see what this sounds like. Or at least what it looks like when we're doing the thing. Real quick, nothing too uh, hectic, just go in, get out, or get in, get out. And you got that. Can't do Q or E. So, now we gotta code that stuff. Like, shouldn't take too long, I don't think. I am going to, of course, need to get my script set up, so I'm probably gonna have this be the world map script. It's not in the main menu. That is a good question. Because we have two different menus here. Uh... I mean, I guess it would be considered a misc if it's the main menu. Because you got the pause menu in here, so of course. World map menu. <clears throat> and for the most part... So this is going to be a little tricky, but uh, we'll try to get this done with. So if input dot get key down is the Q key, of course. <clears throat> well, I should also have a cooldown. Variables, um, private bool cooldown. And cooldown is equal to false. We'll have this equal to true in the beginning, or at least start as true. So cooldown equals true. So that way it takes some time. <laughs> Maybe? Guess it doesn't exactly matter. Cooldown is just there as a means to try to get certain things to work. Um, start coroutine CD, a quick one. I'm going to also change this, um, set up, <clears throat> and to update, I'm uh, just setting up some things real quick. Coroutines, IE numerator, CD, um, just do a wait, oh wait, no, yield return new, wait for a second. And do a 0 0.25. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. 0 0.25. Or was it like 0 0.025 or 5? The thing, the cooldown for movement based stuff. Cooldown equals false. I mean, the other option we have is to have it be, you know, doing that. Yeah, but I feel like it's better to have it here so it does it immediately. And I can just copy this. So at least in this inst- I mean, I guess technically it doesn't matter because you're exiting the scene, right? So what I need now is commands, or whatever the hell those were called. I forgot what these were called. Uh, hold on, do I have the player still? I forgot what all of these were called. Class? Yeah, that's right. Those were called classes, not commands. Class. Um, also, how did I do those again? It's been a while. Public void, right? Pub, well, region, <coughs> uh, zone, Transfer. Well, technically, if this is going to only be used for the zone tran... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I just do zone transfer. I don't need to call it class. Region... I mean, technically, don't you just have this set up like that? So why would I need to call it that? I know there's zone transfer, and there's another thing I want to try out here. It's an optimization thing, basically. And I want to give it a shot. 
call this one zone, well, zone transfer. And what this will do is allow us to transfer between zones and whatnot. It's similar to, did I close that? No, here it is. <clears throat> it is similar to this, basically. Well, technically, it's an IE numerator, so it does this little phase transition thingy. That's right, because we don't have its... Okay, no, no, no. Christ. It's fine. Transition. Oh, yeah, and I also need a scene manager, so let me go on ahead and grab that real quick. There we go. <clears throat> Since there is no zero here in this particular instance, we're getting rid of that. And we're not doing this, but we are going to use this for selection change. Because I have something in mind for that. And I want to give it a shot. <clears throat> oh, I'll just open it up real quick. Start coroutine transition. And this is basically how we're going to perform the transitions. The transition true, then depending on what zone it is, it takes it to the zone loading screen. There's more to the fast travel, and it's pretty simple when you get right down to how it works. <clears throat> so that should take care of the transition process of getting us to the loading screen, at the very least. I would say give it a test, but I don't want to really bog us down with a crap ton of tests for something so simplistic now, do I? What I need now is game objects and materials. First things first, public, what was it? Material? Yeah. Public material. Um, <clears throat> unlocked. Maybe. Um, locked and inaccessible. Assuming I'm spelling that right. That seems right in my head, but for some reason my brain is telling me no. Oh no, I was right. I was the correct one. It's not one of those ables, it's ibles. Weird. But, you know, that's how it is. That's how it is sometimes with the English language. It can get confusing. That's why you got Google, which probably would be considered a crutch now. Well, in the olden days, but nowadays, well, we got what we have. Might as well use it. Okay, so it's basically just using what we have done. That's this dumb <clears throat> game object. There we go. Basically what we've used before. So one, two, three, four, five, seven. See, now I don't know if I want to... <clears throat> well, that's probably not going to help anyone's case now, is it? That is a good question. What, how would that work? Ah, right. De uh, try not to go too fast, just... There we go. Wait a minute. No. Wait. No. No. Uh, I am in the wrong direction. Um, <clears throat> give me a second. There is only five columns. Well, that's a question. That's a good question. How do I want to go about doing that? Do I want to do columns first and then rows? Well, if I do that, I could just go on ahead and do this. Now it'll be easier to do it like this. So that way it's like going in the order that we had it set up in, like, you know, up to down kind of deal. Column one and rows, all that through seven. And now I just gotta go through here, turn that off. And there are only five columns. Theoretically, we should be able to get this done with pretty quickly, but, uh, 
Tap, back up, back up. There we go. Technically, I could just go up there and do it. It's fine. Oh, yeah, did you hear the news about the whole Unity CEO stepping down from his current position because of reasons? Oh, I'm sure you know those reasons. I don't know what that fully means for, you know, the whole thing they were trying to set up. But, you know what? Hey, that's good. No more corporate greed, at least, you know. Not counting what the current setup is with all that we've got going on here. I'm sure there is still issues to be said and done. <clears throat> all right, hold on a second. There is actually some text stuff. Well, shish. Um, what was the text again? I know I had it here, right? <clears throat> Did I have it here? Yeah, Unity UI. I forgot about it. Tidbit. I'll just put this here. Yeah, no, I forgot there's also... There's more things here. Let, let me region this so that I can have an easier time doing this. But yes, some things have changed. I don't know how much, but it seems like they are backpedaling on most of the changes that they were trying to put in. <clears throat> text. Objects. Public text. Because uh, I don't think I could just call it this, can I? No. Or I could do text at the end. Right? Like, I can't just do this? Yeah, no. That's fine. I would say technically I could just go through these and just copy text at the end of these and go through all of this. Ugh, man, that's gonna... I mean, is it any worse than trying to go through all... At least with this in mind, I could just simply go on through here, change these to text, and then just grab the text and copy and paste. Like, I don't know if there's a way I... If there's any keyboard thing I can do that doesn't require me to use the mouse, but I guess this is fine. And we'll just go on ahead and copy text at the end. Hell, technically I could just do this, right? Yeah, because it's not a part of that. It's just a text. Now I can just get rid of this. You idiot. What are you doing? Keep it consistent. Okay. Whew. Messed up in the middle there, not gonna lie. But hey, there we go. There's all of our texts. Jesus, that's a lot of text. Region, text, objects, and then, of course, end region. Alright, good. Are you good? Do I have to go through this entire song and dance again? No? Awesome. <clears throat> All of this, and I have to do this within a span of an hour somehow. Well, let me put this in the UI. And now let me grab all of our nodes. Yeah, everything is in alphabetical order, right? Yes. Ugh, this process. This process is the worst. Let me tell you. Oh yeah, I also got to remind myself how to change the materials of the objects via something else. Because I, I don't think we did that yet, but it should just be as simple as this thing dot get component dot renderer or something around the lines of renderer and maybe not dot. Get component in the middle of the brackets renderer. Oh uh, yeah, maybe I could have probably went on ahead and uh, named it the initials. Eh, it is what it is. <clears throat> it's PBF. 
I mean, the direction that we're going and the way that these are set up, it shouldn't be too hard to do, right? SFTS FI RC Cola and C S T and also what does this look like when I do this? It does not show it, unfortunately. <clears throat> well that's fine. Let's just do a once over and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Initial wise, it seems to be fine. And now we got the text. <laughs> Yeah, that's just the map. And now we got the text. No issue here. <clears throat> it's basically the same thing. So the idea that I have in mind is this. At the start of the loading in of the menu, the materials of the player nodes will change depending on what you have unlocked. If you have a zone unlocked, or I guess first off, if the zone isn't unlocked, the dot next to the name will be red. Also, I gotta change these from this size to one because I realize that technically speaking, they're not all going to be shown. It's going to show where the player is and it moves through the thing, like you know, most of the menu stuff that we've done. I don't know why I had it set up like this. I was tired and wasn't thinking straight. That's always the case of this. I, I'm tired now, but now I'm freaking wide awake and wired because of the the sugar, all the food, all the freaking pent-up energy, the bad chocolate muffin that I might regret tomorrow, but maybe I'll become sick enough to not have to deal with this job for maybe a few days. That is not what I wanted. I want a TS, you fool. I know, these kinds of things happen. We are staying over and want to get a snack. You buy a chocolate muffin and a cinnamon roll. The cinnamon or cinnamon roll. Text it. Start centipede or silverfish. It's a very small one, but I'm killing it anyway, so it doesn't go big. Go. <sighs> Quick, easy kill. It was like this small, but those things grow big and are annoying as hell. Right, Cadillac? Well, in the cat's eyes, she just sees another plaything. Anyways, yeah, you got the muffin. Oh, there's some weird stuff on it. Take it off. Oh, it tastes a little bit, not bad, but it tastes a bit strange. That's fine. I'll continue to eat it. It's sure, surely nothing will happen or something will happen. Maybe I can freaking not have to deal with 12 hours of nonsense. Anyways, yeah, red, if the, the zone isn't unlocked, it'll show a question mark and a red mark next to it. If the zone is unlocked, but you haven't got to the fast travel tower yet, the zone name will still show, but it will be inaccessible currently. But if you have the fast travel tower, and it'll be unlocked, basically speaking. And that should be at least all of this for now. They're still like hiding this stuff, but that doesn't really matter with this kind of stuff right now because of the whole, you know, <clears throat> it being the first thing that's shown immediately. So it's not like it's that big of a deal. Okay, so there's our text object. I'm going to hide the materials, even though it doesn't matter. Really, or not hide the materials. I'm going to folder the materials, even though it doesn't matter. It just makes everything nice and uh, proper. Um, yeah, we are, we are going to definitely need to have variables here. So variable row. Integer row. Private int column. Am I spelling that right? Is it two L's or... Freaking small ass insect. Is it two L's or one L? Column. Yep, it is one L. I don't know why that doesn't look right, but it is, apparently. <clears throat> well, I also need a private 
yeah, private um, bool temp, I'll call it. I'm going to be going ahead and say temp variable. Delete later. Because this is going to be used to allow for all this to work and do its thing. So here's a little selection change. Public void selection. Or no, not selection change. Material change. Material change. There we go. So I guess with this one... Since we already kind of have the zone where it needs to be, so let me go on ahead and um, um, progress variables. Zone one fast travel. I mean, technically, wouldn't it make more sense to have all the material changes be here? Why am I doing that? Let this just be selection chains. I'll just call the selection chains, and we'll use this to change up all the things. Because this is the idea that I have in mind to try to optimize the main menu whenever I can freaking get to it. Material change first. And I'll even regionalize it so that I have an easier time getting it set up here. So if, well, <clears throat> hold on, um, variable setup that will have to occur there. And I'll even go ahead and do this. There's going to be a lot of things that needs to be set up for this in order for it to work. I wonder if that's going to have the loading time increase. Probably won't be that bad, right? <clears throat> it was six, correct? One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. If zone this is greater than or equal to six, right? Yeah. <clears throat> then, what was it again? <clears throat> zone, no, column one, row one, dot get component. Renderer dot material? No. All right, let me look at my player's material setup. I'm sure it's just as simple as the, the player has, but keeping. Get component render. Ah, the, this, of course, the usual that. Dot material equals. Well, since this is equal to or greater than six, I think, then that would mean it's come or unlocked. Right. That's what it does when it's equal to six or greater than six. If not, it'll be inaccessible. These are the material changes that will occur throughout the course of doing all of this. <clears throat> With the variable setup, zone one ft equals data dot zone one. Okay, now here's the part that's gonna suck. What was it again that I needed? It was minimap, right? So that I can figure out what the percentage is. <clears throat> yeah, percent 100. That's right. It was 100. So this is just checking to see if this right here is equal to 6 or greater than 6. Because it starts out at 0 until you complete the level. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that should be as simple as that. And that's basically how the material change there is going to work. There is, of course, a lot more to set up, though. So <clears throat> that's our first zone. 
So in this instance, since we don't have anything here, if temp is equal to false or true, maybe. Now we could do temp one and like temp two. This is mostly just for me to try to get everything kind of set where it needs to be. <clears throat> So if temp1 is equal to true, say this is the unlocked variable. And then we got else if temp temp1 is equal to true and temp2 is equal to false. Wait, what is it that I need? This is detecting to see if... Alright. So it would be... Temp1 would be the variable instance for, say, if you've unlocked the zone via a certain instance. Temp2 would be if you unlocked it via completing a certain instance there. Of course, this would just be changed to numbers. <laughs> Of course, these would all be just chains of numbers, but this is just here to make a temp, basically. So that, and then this. I guess technically, since zone 2 kind of uses at least one part of the, what do you call it? And on else if. This, this one would just simply be uh, locked. So this is what it would be. If the zone... Prior to the one that you enter, like, say, for example, uh, let's say zone 6A. If you completed one part of one of the zones and then completed another part of the one of the zones, although I don't know how that's going to work, it's going to be an or statement with that one, at least. Things will be changed there in that department. I'm just setting this up for the general sake of it. Then that is when that goes on ahead. Was it text equals question, 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 question. I think five question marks in a row will work perfectly. Okay, just do two, for example. If the one, if you complete, uh, if, let's say if this is 10. Matter of fact, I could probably go on ahead and uh, do that. Zone 1FT is... I guess, for simplicity's sake, equal to or greater than 10, unlike, unlikely to occur because there's no way in hell that you're getting this to 11. So it detects to see if the zone prior was completed. Same thing will apply in this department here. Well, I guess, technically speaking, there is no need for that. Because this is just checking to see if that is over it. So basically, if, uh, you know, the zone prior to this one is greater, is completed, and you're transferring over to here. Wait, what? Why? How is this even? This? No. What? Hold on. Why is that no issues found? That looks like an issue. How? Okay, no. Ooh, you dick. You dick muncher. You son of a bitch. Zone completed. And level completed, i.e. this one, for the current zone you're in. Show that it's unlocked. Otherwise, if you complete the zone beforehand, it'll show, but it's inaccessible. But if you haven't, then it's locked. And it's a question mark. And we can leave all the text as they are, which is perfect, unless it changes something, which is going to suck if it does. I mean, I could test it out right now, right? Everything is pretty much set there. All I got to do is just go on ahead and change all of these as I see fit. Basically, just change these to the, from that to this. I'm going to just copy this. 
<clears throat> I'm going to do the test now and see if these two become question marks and if this becomes what it needs to be. Okay, good. Great. Now, obviously, these are going to disappear soon. Just not now. For now. For the time being. Obviously. Of course. But of course. So now we're just setting up every single one of these to what they have to be. And because we don't have access to these particular zones, there's no way to unlock them. Which is fine, because we don't need to do that yet. That's only going to occur once I have gotten to the part where I make all the zones and I implement all of them as I see fit. Well, you know, I could just do this for now. Copy this. <clears throat> and then I just go through these by placing the number one and boom. Same thing with this, too. There are going to be some that are going to be completely different. But right now I'm just setting up the main system. Nothing too hectic, nothing too crazy. I just want to get the material stuff out of the way with. When the time comes, I will set up the code myself when we start making the rest of the other zones. And when we complete the zones, we implement them. Man, I really want to get more work done on this, though. I, I really do. But this job is being such a cunt when it comes to overtime. It's too much. It is too much. There are so many people on 12s this week. And all to try to give us all a Sunday. So do we get a Saturday, too? I don't know. It's not on the board yet. Or at least at, at the time of recording this, which is... Monday, well, technically Tuesday, 3.21 a.m. And yes, I am planning on sacrificing an hour or more of sleep to get this and a played-up video recorded. It feels like that's the only thing I can do to get any of my projects done with this sacrifice my sleep. Why does it have to be like that, you may ask? I don't know. These jobs really just want to take your freaking life away. I'm contemplating on not going to sleep. Um... Tomorrow, Tuesday night, if they try to force me to stay for some stupid reason. Because I need to get stuff done with. I'm surprised I got, I got, uh, you know, the first episode of a series that I am working on done with in one freaking day somehow. Granted, I think I'm missing some thing detail wise, but it's such a minute thing I can easily put in without too much effort. If I haven't, well, there is one more thing that I'm going to put in. A question mark. You won't know because it's a mature drawing. Even though there's not a whole lot of mature aspect to it. It's basically just a setup for the series. <clears throat> <coughs> but for the most part, anyways... I finally got that done with. And the end goal here... Okay, hold on. I'm so used to doing the double space. Why change that? <sighs> yeah, I see. See see what I mean? It's all doubled. Why? Why did I do it like that? <clears throat> Anyways, as I was saying, the only thing I need to do left in that department is just uh, post the... Or, Post a drawing with the story. Which I am planning on doing on a Tuesday. Provided I don't get screwed over. But if that happens, well... Woo! swoop dee swoop Sacrificing my sleep, we do. Or... Freaky weepy slack of sac Sacrificing my sleepies. I don't fucking know. I'm tired. I'm tired as hell. I think I got a little over six hours of sleep or so. <clears throat> Why do I do this to myself? Well, I got a lot of things that I need to do. And I need to sacrifice time to sleep, from sleep, to do the things that I need to do. 
See, I have cons I am persistent in that respect. I feel like I could definitely go for it because I've done it once before when I was young. You may think, oh, you're tw you're 27 now. There's no way you can do that now. Oh, you would be fucking surprised. My body is just not quitting. It just refuses to quit, even though it should. Why does it do that? I have no freaking clue. I don't understand why. Well, there's our material changes. There's also a f another thing that we gotta do. <clears throat> so I guess I'll at least set it up here. So here is our exit world map. Just activates that without changing the zones or the level variable. Now we just need navigation. <clears throat> Which is pretty freaking simple, really. Get key... You know what I'm going to use. I've used it more times than you can freaking count. I'll get the rows and stuff set up, and that's not how it's supposed to go. Um, this is mostly what the cool down is going to be used for. I don't know why. I feel like I... Oh, no, not true. False. Not sure why. But this is just what I'm deciding to do with the cooldowns and stuff. Okay, so this is changing the columns, correct? Yeah. If <clears throat> column is equal to... Well, hold on a second. Um, let's make row equal 1 and let's make column equal 1. Well, technically speaking, uh, one. No, you fucking idiot. Don't forget your semicolon. Equal one. I know I technically don't need to do it like that. I know this works. I just, I feel like it should just be like this to keep this up here clean. I don't know why. Even though I probably haven't done that before. <clears throat> well, let's do equal or greater than or equal to. Wait. No, yeah, no, hold on. One. No, wait, this is D. What am I doing? D is right. Uh, less than or equal to. No, oh, no, it is greater than or equal to on the off chance that we somehow go past five for some stupid reason. No, why would we go past five? When I have a certain system in place as a failsafe in case we do somehow go past five. <clears throat> if column is equal to five, then column equals one. Goes back to that. Else, column plus, oh, plus equals one. <clears throat> so one is the beginning to five, obviously, one, two, three, four, five. Column is equal to five, then column equals one. If it's not equal to five, then go up by plus one. And that's basically how that's going to go. It's simple as that, really. Nothing too complex. <clears throat> And now we have this direction, where it's checking to see if this is equal to 1. Bye. If it's not, then negative 1. <clears throat> Going left this time around. Goes to 5, goes left. Cooldown equal true, blah blah blah. Same thing applies to the rows. <clears throat> Up. Well, no, down. If we're doing positives, then we're doing it like this, row. Also, let's make this easy by doing this. So if row is equal to 7, then bring it to 1. If not, plus equals 1. <clears throat> now we go up. If row is equal to 1, make it 7. Do minus equals 1. Fail safe selection because I feel like it's also kind of important also I should be freaking setting up more of these so that I have more organization 
Why am I not doing that? Who the hell knows? Navigation. I forgot the G. <laughs> Navigation. And end region. There we go. If row is greater than five, for some reason or another, if it somehow goes to six, then row equal one or five. One or five. Because, see, it goes up, then it does its cooldown thing, and that's where it stops. <clears throat> but if it somehow goes past it and goes to six... Oh, wait, no, it would be seven. Column is what I'm thinking about. If row is less than one... <clears throat> And row equals one. So if it somehow goes to zero or below, it goes back to one. If it somehow goes seven or above, it goes back to seven. Same thing that will occur with the column. If it's greater than five, not greater than or equal to, greater than five, column equals five. This is only if it somehow manages to bug out and goes further than it needs to go. Which I feel like is always a good thing to have. So there's our navigation. We don't have any way to actually fully test this out yet, not until we get everything set up. How much time has passed? 46 minutes? Jesus! Okay, man, Christ. Um, all right. So after doing the material change and after doing this, Selection, change, run that. And this is how we plan on doing the selection changes and whatnot. So if, um, let's do column is equal to, or equal to one, and row is equal to one. And column one, row one, dot set active equal, no, set active true, oops, true. Else, do this. <clears throat> Matter of fact, we can at least test it out with this one right now. So if I press down, Am I selected? No. Let me lower this so I can hear myself thinking. Um, where the hell is the column? Why you work? You're in the update, right? Navigation in the update. D. Cooldown equals false. Does cooldown not equal false? It should equals. No, it's not looping. Well, you know what? A good thing we stayed long enough to test that out. Uh, that's no biggie. Just put this on loop. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to put this to public so I can see what's active. And see what's active here as well. And somehow have it set to something stupid, right? Fail safe should only be doing this, right? Less than, is that greater than or less than? That means greater than, right? That means less than, right? I, in this particular department, I can't remember. Well, let me at least check if my UI and see what it's like. No, that is changing. This is right. No, I can't go down. For some reason. Wait a minute. Did I do S? 
because that probably would explain why that's not working. Ah, you dumbass brain. You stupid brain. Well, regardless, the thing is still showing for some reason. Set active equals true. Else, set active equals false. C1, R1. Oh, wait, right, 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 I forgot, I forgot. This is something that I gotta remember to set up here every time we move everything. This is the whole uh, purpose of this test here, is to see if this works. I forgot to put this in. I'm tired. I have excuse. I only got six hours of sleep and worked 12 hours today. Hopefully I don't fuck up the plate up run. Alright, let's see. Okay, so that did that. Good, good, great. So it is, it is changing. That's great. That's good. That's awesome. That's, uh, that's actually really good. <laughs> oh, Christ. Now I gotta do this constantly. I get the feeling I'm not gonna be able to get the progress stuff set up tonight. Which sucks. But... <sighs> it is what it is, Barney. This is just what happens. I think next episode I'm going to start working on the, um, the second sound. Primarily because, well, I think the rest we could do on our own. Assuming I can get the fucking time to do what that is to say. Hold up. Column one. That way I can actually freaking differentiate this shit. No, you fool. All I'm two. <clears throat> two, 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 two. Did I get all the twos here? I don't know. Let's see. Do we have all the twos? Two, 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 two. Two. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do have all the twos. But now we need the threes, and then the fours, and then the fives, and then after that, I'm not sure. I mean, I could probably get the totals set up. I at least want to try to get the fast travel stuff active. Uh, I don't know if I want to play through the game with a broken keyboard. And I don't want to bring my other spare keyboard out that I use to play Minecraft in Terraria. Well, I guess technically, no, I don't really need the spare keyboard for Terraria. I forget the fact that the W key isn't used as much. And when it is used, it's very situational. I still need this fucking keyboard fixed, but it's just not happening. Alright, there's all of our threes. Now let me grab all of the, the columns here. Technically, I don't need to do... Fuck. Technically, I don't need to do that. It would have been fine as is, but it, you know what? Screw it. Alright. Now we've got our fourth column. So... You know how I have all of the main menu set to have basically all the set actives in an update? And how the menu lags a bunch sometimes? I have an idea to basically do something like this. Have all the, the movements and navigation inside of certain menus activate this only once. So as opposed to doing it every updated frame. It only does it once. <clears throat> and provided everything moves and is changed properly, there shouldn't be any concerns for... Whoops. There shouldn't be any concerns for anything screwing up. Hopefully. 
If everything changes first and then updates, then that should work better. And it seems relatively instant. Although, then again, the world map is very freaking small. There's another thing that I think I need to do to try to reduce the load, loading time, at least. And that's something to do with audio. The main menu has such a long-ass loading time. I have a funny feeling it has something to do with all of the voice lines that I have recorded, which I guess makes sense. I remember hearing a comment from Moist Critical in that one game, that one Spanish war game that I don't know what the hell it was trying to be. Saying that if there's like a lot of voice lines, the file of the game like is ginormous. I don't remember how many gigabytes that game was, but surely there's no way that, you know, this takes up, is going to take up that much space. Um, where do I want to go again? Also, Eve, stop it. What did I just say? Stop it. Yeah. What are you doing? Over here. Oh my fucking god. Are you broken? Click this. Okay, fine. Steam. Oh, never mind. Let me go to my voice. X. S. F. X. I want to see something real quick. Decompress on load. Compressed in memory. Wait, huh? It's already on decompress on load? What if it's decompressed on memory? I have to imagine decompress on memory means that it is decompressing in the start, right? Because with this, it doesn't make any difference. If decompress on load means that it loads and that's what it sounds like, then... Having a decompressor in memory doesn't make a difference. I'm going to test that out at some point in time, but right now my main test is just seeing if this works. So now everything should be gone. Yeah. Got red here. The movement as such. Go around everywhere. The only thing that we need now is sound effects, and I think I can easily do that by going on ahead. <clears throat> sound effects, region, sound effects, and region, and region. You know what I want, damn it. Public audio source um, movement, right? Movement. <clears throat> Public audio source on a no. No, wait, unavailable. Now, this is the one that needs the available, right? Yes, unavailable. Well, let me see. Yeah, no, it is able. This is one of those able moments. And public audio. Oops. Public audio motherfucker. Um, select. Uh, where's my exit? Here we are. Um, unavailable dot play. I don't really need the thing down there to play it. It's just one sequence. You, on the other hand, <clears throat> as you move, movement dot play. Let's just copy that and place that here. So every time you move. Now I just gotta go into the UI menu movement. Well, that ain't gonna work. I'll just do this. It's not gonna do anything if I do that. Movement back unavailable selection. Simple as that, really. The idea here is to have E not be able to do anything in this department. So now that we got that set up, I am going to go on ahead. Level select is equal to one right now. So what we are going to do is go over to zone. Or progress zone, right. Which should be, in this instance, uh, six. 
Now it equals six. Uh, let me think. Back path, third path, second path, first path, six. So that would mean that this would be active right now, correct? I, there's nothing to play. So this should be green now, right? Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, um, think, think, brain, think. What's next, what's next? We literally reached the hour point, but I want to at least get this set up before I call it here, so let me see. I don't need this open anymore for the time being. <laughs> Okay. Fast travel. Region fast travel. Okay. okay, thanks. Thanks, program. I thought you were on N region, but no, you're on region. So if zone 1 FT, basically just going off of what we had here which is greater than or equal to six. Then, let's just start code. Oh, hold on, let me hide all of this. I don't need this open. Oh, wait. Well, you're kind of pointless now, aren't you? Because you're already in this particular department. Yeah, let me just get rid of that. Okay, that means I need selection then. So uh, selection dot dot play, you idiot. Or is it select? What is it again? Select? Yeah, select. Select dot play start transition. Oh yeah, and heal down is e is equal to false. Oh, wait, right. I do need this to equal true so you can't accidentally move anything else. I guess that's the reason why I want the cool down to be true. But not, like, do a little thing here. Wait, hold on. I feel like that should be up here instead. Like what I have up here. You son of a bitch. You fat, you fat fingered the C key. As you can see with that being up there instead. Then shoot, blah blah blah, select play, and then do the transition thing, which does the fade in and so on and so forth. Else, don't do anything, just play this. The others are in the same vein, but we don't have any of the other stuff set up. I just wanted to get this set up and ready and ready to go when it's time for this to be ready to go. So now, if everything goes accordingly... Uh, hold up. Um, no. Uh, first of all, if... Input.getKeyDown. Christ, I'm too fucking tired for this. Keycode.e. Um, then it does all of that. And then and this is where the cooldown is. Well, I guess technically I could just leave the cooldown here, and if this runs that, then this runs it and only does that. <clears throat> and if you press E while this is trying to do, where you're trying to select anything else, then yeah, and so on and so forth. And it's not going to work. Oh my god. Of course, I forgot the rows and columns. <coughs> All right, if a column is equal to one and row is equal to one and zone one FT is greater than or equal to six, then do that. If not, then do this. Well, that might be an issue if that occurs. So what I need to do 
is this and So I don't have to like do this constantly. You get the hell out of here. Ah! <clears throat> uh, why? Why are you like this? Why do I keep pressing the wrong key? Mm -hmm. And then we just take this and we put that here instead. There, that way if you're in the column, it checks to see if that's it there. If not, then it plays that. Much better. It's going to leave us problems if we leave it there. It's going to be... It's going to blow out everybody's eardrums every time I try to select a zone. Ugh, Christ. Son of a fuck. Okay, now everything should work unless I fuck something else up. So if I press E, nothing's happening because we don't have this code. We don't have this code yet, right? Yeah, but if we go to here, we go to the first zone. Wait, I forgot. Hold on. There is an important thing here. Uh, data dot zone selected equals one. Data dot level selected equals six. This is the important part in the fast travel. Change the zone, change the level selected, runs the transition, gets sent to the zone, and because level selected is what it needs to be, it goes to where it needs to be. <clears throat> we can even do a full-on test in zone one. Boom. I still wish I could figure out how to fix this lighting issue and it doesn't involve me starting in the zone to do it. So now, if I move on over to... Where is it? Here, the high cliffs, where the level is equal to 1. Right here, right now. Oh man, I wanna I don't wanna have to walk all the way across the world to get to where I need to get to. Oh man, that feels like too much. Also the gate's not gonna be open, obviously, because nothing there is active. No, because of the way this data is set. Oh man, I'm gonna just go on ahead and utilize my newly acquired fast travel system to go all the way over to the tower here. Ah, oh, so much better. Now I can move over to the level that I was going to go and do, but I decided to go all the way back there to my house for some reason. Yep. Oh, look at those enemies moving up there. Look at those fools. You can see the enemies just moving around doing their thing. This guy over here. This guy down here. It gives the level of the area a little bit more life seeing some of the game objects around the place. Okay, so at least the fast travel system works. The only thing that we have to get done with next, really, is just the level totals and then this over here. But I'm doing that off camera. I got to record a plate up next. I don't have the time to be screwing around with this. So that's all for today. I'm going to next episode, we're going to work on um, the uh, the next zone. And I'm going to try to get as, um, as much off camera stuff done with, presuming I can get any fucking time from work. To stop giving me all this overtime, because I'm getting sick of it. But anyways, thank you all for watching today's episode of Game Crafters. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Subscribe for more. Check out that there playlist. And of course, phew. Previous episode of Game Crafters right over here. And the most recent episode of Tales of Seria right over here. Where we get angry at a child and an old man. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Later.